Welcome to The Breakdown. I am De La Creme de La, your privileged host. And we are going to today continue looking at these Village of Dalton board meetings. <clears throat> Excuse me, from the Village of Dalton channel. Um, we're going to look at the regular board meetings first because what we're really looking at mostly is this deficit. Um, but we're also speaking a lot about Tiffany Henyard's behavior and that of her administration. So I kind of accidentally almost started this breakdown without you because I was trying to see where the best part to start the video was. And I kind of got curious and started doing some zoom in. So I figured I better go ahead and press record. Before I do begin and press play from where I was watching, notice that we are at 9 minutes and 25 seconds into this video. This uh, meeting has not started yet, as you can see from what you see. There's no meeting happening 9 minutes and 25 seconds into the recording starting. And I'll tell you, the, the meeting does not start until 14 minutes and 15 seconds into the beginning, to the second. Not down to the millisecond, but definitely down to the second. 14 minutes and 15 seconds. How dare you make these people wait that long? Tiffany Henyard and whoever's responsible for keeping her on track. Okay? How dare you allow the people to have to sit there and wait that long? It's so disrespectful. It's despicable. But I got a little curious about something, and I want to take a closer look at something, and I'll give you a hint what that is. <clears throat> but before I do, let me officially welcome you to the Breakdown Show. And if you are here, whether it's your first time or whether you've been here before, whether you've been here for a long time, whether you are in the replay gang, whether you are a bush baby, whether you are living it up in the, in the comments, regardless of who you are, I want to thank you and I want to welcome you for coming to the Breakdown. I recognize that my vibe attracts our tribe, uh, so I recognize that we are critical thinkers. Now, there are people who are, you know, not necessarily that and will come and Maybe learn a couple things or two. But for the most part, this is a contributory group. We all see something. And I love how we have these conversations in the comments about the things that we see and sharing our notes about what we know. I want to welcome all of you. Um, I want to go over a couple house rules. I did realize that uh, that is something I need to do again. So let me go ahead and implement a couple house rules. They are usually all the same. The very first one is, this is not a no judgment zone. No, this is the breakdown zone. This is not a no judgment zone. And you can't do both in the same space. You can't not judge something and break it down at the same time. Because in order to break it down, you've got to be willing to see what's there. Know where to separate it. Know what each little crumble means. Huh? So this is not a no judgment zone. This is a place of free thought. This is a place where knowledge is power. This is a place where education is king. Okay. This is a place of excellence. This is a place where we celebrate our thinking crowns. So I'm going to give you a, a quick opportunity right now to go ahead and straighten up your thinking crown. It's probably Sunday Sunday or, or Sunday night or Monday morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we ain't really that far apart, to be honest with you. There's only 12 hours on the clock. <laughs> so none of us are really that far apart in time. But let's go ahead and straighten out our thinking crowns. It might be a little tilted because it's been a lit, lit weekend. <laughs> Not for me. I'm a mom. <laughs> it's pretty chill over here. But go ahead and take your time to straighten out that thinking crown because today we are going to watch this video from November, I'm sorry, December 2023. And I haven't watched it yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll be doing this together. Now, house rule number two. This is not for children. If that means you don't like cussing, you don't like people talking about, you know, adult things. If this is if this is uh, something you'd like to listen to at work, I would suggest you put some strong AirPods in, like the suctiony ones, because I curse a lot. 
Oh, a lot. I like it. It feels so good on my tongue to say certain words. I did allow my daughter to curse. I had to pull that shit back. She was going crazy. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I made her some popcorn. She was like, ooh, I love this motherfucking popcorn. <laughs> I was like, that was unnecessary. <laughs> So I decided to pull it back, and right now she's on a, a cursing hiatus until I see her use her regular words more responsibly. Um, I call it adjustive parenting. Uh, <laughs> but this is not for kids. This is not something that you want to put in a space where children might listen unless you don't mind. And, you know, a lot of people are different when it comes to the children that are in their space. But I've not really heard anybody say they got an issue with their kid watching the show. It'd be these grown-ass motherfuckers with sensitive-ass, fake-ass ears who have a hard time listening to real words said over the air anymore. Oh, Lord. So anyway, those are the two house rules. I guess the third one as normal, um, since we are talking about a subject that does include a diverse um, viewership, spectatorship, I will put this one rule on the table. This is not my topic to talk to put the rule on, but this is my house. So let me put this rule on the house. OK, um, since this is a topic mainly related to black people and black people of a certain economic <laughs> A certain economic, uh, socioeconomic level, um, the disenfranchised, you know, what some would call the least of these. I would definitely ask that you refrain if you are not black, if you don't identify as a Negro, um, if you are not allowed to say the word nigga, uh, if your mama don't know how to make some potato salad, if your daddy don't know how to make real good ribs, like tender ones, okay? It's very important if you didn't have to get up on Saturday mornings to clean up and you didn't teach yourself how to braid your hair and your friend's hair. If you didn't do nails or hair in college in your dorm room, please be very, very careful how you speak about these topics. Racial slurs are only allowed here by people of the same race, and that's black people. This is our barbecue. So we're going we're gonna to put in place the respect, okay? We've had to put a couple of uh, Chinese people out of some black parties in China. Because we were like, damn, can we have some space to ourselves? Why are you filming us doing a mojuba? Can we do this mojuba without you filming us? Shit. So I, I've learned how to put that on out there. This is a black space, a black American space. So that goes for Africans too. Africans, you can't be over here calling us nigga. Especially since you don't lotion your ankles. Um, so anyway... <laughs> I love everybody. I really do. I, I I can truly say that. I do love everybody. I couldn't always say that, but I do now. And I'm grateful for it. So let us begin. Before we do, though, I want to take a look at a comment. Now, the reason why this comment is significant is because today is, on this video, uh, excuse me, December 4th, 2023. It bugs the shit out of me that they put the date here with periods because while that is contemporary, it's not legal and it's not professional. We still do things a very old fashioned way um, in, in the legal and professional world. So it bothers me that this doesn't say December 4th or December 4, comma, 2023, because that's the way it should be. It just this isn't a file. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's whatever. That's my own special excellence. Uh, before I begin playing the video and us taking a look at the content, I do want to go to a comment. And if you're watching this replay and not necessarily watching the premiere, you will be able to see this comment on your screen. So let me find it. It's from Michael B. Garçon. I don't know if his name is Garçon or Garson. Um, I'm going to say Garçon because that's what feels good to my tongue. I like to do what feels good to my tongue. So Michael B. Garçon made a comment. Um, here it is. I'm going to bring it on up a little bit for you guys so that you could see it. So... You'll, if you look down toward the middle of the screen, well, now it's toward the top in the comments, you'll see the large word S hashtag X offender question mark. Now, keep in mind, this was December 4th, 
2023. It was on or about May 26, 2023, when it was uh, when it was alleged that um, Andrew Holmes had drugged and raped um, Tiffany Henyard's assistant, who we don't see anymore in these videos. Don't hear her name. <clears throat> don't see her. Um, we do see some new chick pop up, and I hope she understands that she's in danger too. But she seems to be okay. Uh, I'll explain why I said that in a minute. But I want to read this comment from Michael B. Garcon. It says, where is Andrew Holmes, our latest sex offender? He assaulted a young lady on Tiffany's staff. So my question is, if he knew, Tiffany knew. If Tiffany knew, Andrew knew. If Tiffany knew, Keith knew. How come the board didn't know? I believe Stanley Brown knew, even though he wasn't the accused. I believe he knew about this situation, including Andrew Holmes, who is not present. Andrew Holmes liked to use his mama as an excuse to get out of meetings. She always have a medical emergency around 8 o'clock on a Monday. It just happened to be football season, though. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I've had enough men to know. You, you leave that nigga alone around 8 o'clock on a Monday, honey. That's his time, sweet face. I like football, though, so. Anyway, um, I think it's important for us to give that moment what it needs. He said, Michael B. Garçon said, where is Andrew Holmes, our latest sex offender? He assaulted a young lady on Tiffany's staff. Hmm. Hmm. Where did Michael B. Garcon get that information from? And how did it happen to turn out to be leaning toward true based on what we know today? So I also was wondering, let me go back. This chick right here in the gray dress, where's she come from? She's walking back and forth at the beginning of this meeting like she's supposed to be there, but I don't know who she is. And at some point, she goes up and talks to Michael Delgado and Tiffany Henyard and then Keith Freeman. She's already talked to Michael Delgado and Tiffany Henyard. Tiffany thought she was coming over to talk to her, and she didn't. But she goes and talks to Janice Johnson, the HR lady, probably because Tiffany said something to her she ain't had no business saying. I think that's the white girl that uh, the whole. All right, good evening, did. everybody. That's the white girl that the Holy Spirit showed me. Um, Kanye West, baby cousin, was is uh, stopping by to get some dry chicken on the way home. Uh, yeah, the meeting starts at 14.15. It's super retarded. But this meeting is only an hour and 34 minutes. I mean, damn. Hopefully, this video is less than two hours. We'll see. I'll do my best. Hmm. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, we now have a quorum. We can start our board meeting. Um, today, I would like to call to order the regular scheduled board meeting. Um, today is December 4th, 2023. The time is uh, 6.44 p.m. Clerk, please call the roll. 6.44 p.m. She didn't make these people sit here and wait an extra 14 minutes and 15 seconds. 
That's so disgusting. Good evening, everyone. Trustee Norwood? Present. Trustee Stan Brown? Here. Trustee Tammy Brown? Present. Trustee House? Present. Trustee Holmes? Present. Trustee Belcher? Here. We have a quorum. All right, next is Pledge of Allegiance. Will you all stand for the pledge? What's she calling? <laughs> If you would continue to stand for prayer, Mr. Williams, leave us in prayer. Thank you. His name is not Mr. Williams. His name is William Moore. I wonder what has her flustered. Something has her out of sorts. Maybe Pete McCain hemmed her up too. Time that we gather, Father, as the leaders and as the people, continue to bless us, Father, with strength, understanding, wisdom, courage to do your will, Father. We ask that you bless this meeting, Father, with peace, understanding, and Father, ultimately, oneness, Father. And we just thank you for it now. Continue to bless our divine leader, Lord, that you've chosen for this hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. William Moore, if you prayed like this two months ago, I wouldn't have spent a whole Sunday tap dancing on your ass. Now, while this prayer did have its moments of abuse, referring to her as appointed by God or whatever, God damn, it was a whole lot more neutral than the last prayer and the one before that. You must have got a little bit of conviction. Or maybe that whole prayer before was about her and you just don't have the balls to tell her. But you sure did mix up some scripture in there. Let's continue. All right, next we have public comment. You have three minutes to address this body. Uh, if you have any public comments, please come to the podium. Excuse me. Now, let's play a little game. I'm not sure if this comment has posted to the community tab, but at some point you will see a comment that posts to the community tab where one of the breakdown crew members did the work to see that these citizens are not getting their full three minutes. I speculated about it. I had a feeling, but I'm glad that the work was done. So tonight we're going to take a look. Now, what I want to look at is a couple things. I want to look at the time they go into public comment and the time they end public comment. Because if that's less than 30 minutes, then we already know for sure the people aren't getting their time. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they need all three minutes because not everybody needs all three minutes, apparently. But there are some that get cut off and it feels a little short, don't it? So let's just see what happens while we listen to the public comment. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the 145th Street Blackstone, and we as the resident would like to thank you over and over again for the magnificent job that you've done for the trim period. We hope that it will continue to bless our block and continue to bless you. Thank you. Okay, he didn't need his three minutes, and neither do I. He said trim treeving. I think what he meant was the dope drop-off. Thank you so much for supplying us with more dope so we could sell it into the community. Because then it got real dry, and we weren't really able to make any money. And you made sure the guy who works for the tree trimming company, who you owe $450,000 to, you made sure we got some of that dope, whatever it was, that he gave y'all. Thank you over and over again for the trim treving. Good evening. My name is Hope Cumberlander. I'm here on behalf of AC Power. Um, they specialize in a developing community solar projects on brownfields, which are properties that are contaminated or formerly contaminated. 
Um, AC Power is working with a landowner um, on a community solar project that will be built right here in Villas of Dalton. Um, what they have me here for is to just find out if we can um, get a letter signed um, or at least a conference with um, anyone to discuss more um, in depth about this solar project. Um, and then they need uh, for land permits um, that they're gonna be working on. Um, and I just wanted to find out who do I contact, um, who do I call in reference to this? All right, that will be Keith Freeman, the village administrator. He's right here to my left. Okay. Um, so after the meeting, you can talk with them. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. A lie. Ma'am, how did that go? How has that gone? Uh, getting in touch with Keith Freeman. And, and bringing your project to fruition, those solar that solo project and those land permits, ma'am. How's that going? My name is Kevin Green. I'm a uh, resident of uh, Dalton. I just I uh, I really didn't want to bring this to this meeting, but I feel like I have to. Uh, the police department towed a vehicle in front of my house. They gave me seven days to move the vehicle. They told the vehicle in six days. I've been trying, constantly going over there, trying to get this vehicle released. They refused to release the vehicle. They asked for, I have a dealership license. They asked for the license. I presented the license. They asked for the title, but I presented the title. They asked for the bill of sale. I presented the bill of sale. They've asked for insurance. I uh, presented the insurance. And it's like, they constantly keep coming with tactic after tactic after tactic. But at the end of the day, if you're in, uh, Given seven days, they put the stick on my vehicle. On the, on the, actually, police came to my house and asked me, this is my car? I said, yes. He leave. A couple days later, I come with the stick on there. Say on the first, the stick on there. You got it's the seventh to get it towed. I'm here before it get towed. They towed it on the sixth. But again, the police, they refused to acknowledge that they legally towed my car first and foremost. And second, they refused to release it. I give them everything they've asked for pertaining to this vehicle. And they refused to release it. I even have one of the officers tell me, well, it's illegal to sell cars in Illinois. I'm like, no, I have a dealer's license. He was like, well, I actually, I, I work under someone with a dealer's license. But he tell me, you can't do that. It's illegal to do that. It, no, it's not illegal to do that. Now I'm being told that uh, the vehicle's being told they count the first day as a day. And I'm like, okay, I've been there eight times talking to these people. No one has mentioned this. So it's like every time I come talk to someone, it's constantly, I'm constantly being, you know, Canada being kicked down the road. I came down over here, put in the paperwork to see yourself or the village administrator. Three weeks went past, I hear nothing. I come back, she want me to put my name on the board again. Why do I have to put my name on the board if I already addressed this matter? She go in the office, my paperwork sitting on the board, on her desk. Here it is a month later, my paperwork still sitting on the desk, but you all always say, reach out to the village administrator, someone will get back with you. Here it is a month later, no one still hasn't got back with you. So I'm just trying to find some peaceful resolution where I can get this vehicle because, again, it was totally legally. All right. Thank so, you. So who do I talk to? You can wait and see one of us after the board meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, ay, ay, ay. So they just stealing people's cars? Is that what's up? So the police towed his vehicle and won't release it. And they just be making laws up. You can't sell cars in Illinois. Okay. I mean, these are patterns that we've seen. We saw them tell Tommy G he couldn't film at the um, village hall. That's not true. That he had to show a license in Illinois. That's not true. Not unless he's been accused of a crime. We also see the pattern of paperwork sitting on somebody's desk for a month. Dr. Scott has said the same thing. And delays in communication. And he said, listen very closely. He said he just wants some peaceful resolution. Okay? Tiffany and Keith, I'm telling you. Tiffany, from what I understand, you may or may not still live in Dalton. You are the only person of the bunch. You and maybe Stacy and Kim. 
you might want to get your shit together. Because you can only fuck with black people for so long before we go ahead and do a 2016 on your ass. And that's the night the lights went out in Georgia. Okay? You don't want to see the whole year from 2016, 2015, 2017, 2018. You don't want to see black people wrecking shop again like we had to all over again. Ain't had to do it since the 80s. Didn't have to do it before that since the 60s. But we'll do it again, uh, Tiffany. Now, it would be a horrible shame if the black people in your town ended up tearing your shit up. And you black. But at this point, it ain't no colors involved. That curse has been broken, Eveline. You can't curse people culturally. You might still have your religious abuse on them, but you ain't got that cultural abuse. They come out of that. Okay? I would suggest you heed this man's words. He is asking for some peaceful communication and... He came up here with headphones on so he wouldn't be bothered. He probably got some subliminals, some hurts, some frequencies in the headphones to keep him from whooping one of them police officers' ass. Anyone else? Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Chin. And I'm a new resident, I uh, just purchased a home over on Blackstone. And when I purchased the property, I was told there was an inspection done on the house. And it said I had four months to bring it up to code. I put up an escrow and I, the, the, the inspections were completed um, October 12th. And I was told I was going to get back my escrow check. And it's been almost two months now. So I just wanted to know about that because whenever I call, they, they can't give me an answer as to a date when I'm getting the money back. All right. You can see someone after the board meeting. Okay. Thank All right. you. You're welcome. I don't know why people are accepting this answer. Um, but she said she had an escrow refund that was supposed to be due to her two months ago. I'm guessing that's one of those $500 escrows. Um That's why I ask, where's the report on how much is re refunded in escrows from the housing department, from William Don't Pray For Me No More? How come he doesn't include in his report how much was refunded in escrows? I've asked that a couple meetings back. I still want to know. And here we have... Probably, I'm guessing his role in all of this, we know now that he works for Public Works, right? He had to come up in his green jacket, so we know he works for Public Works. Um, he probably wore that same green jacket in Chicago to the strip club. Because he probably get off, he get off work at 3 o'clock every day and drive to Chicago and go to the strip club. Um, they all do. So anyway, um, he is speculatively, arguably anticipated to be the person in the organization who does a lot of the organizing when it comes to the drug sales. So if the guy who does the trees is one of the plugs, okay, then Stacy takes that product and maybe flips it to this guy, DeMarcus, who has kids in Dalton who probably have never, ever ice skated at the thing, maybe once or twice. Stacy probably flips the product to this guy who probably flips the product throughout public works and then they provide it, they sell it on their own. Now, if the guy from the lodge was asking, was thanking her for the trim treeving, which I'm guessing he meant tree trimming, he's definitely in connection with Stacy Carell. 
let me let let me let you hear what this little nigga got to say. Good evening, everyone. My name is Demarcus Kirkley. I'm 27 year resident as of this month. Um, I want to uh, come shed some lights on some things that's going on in the community um, with the tree trimming, uh, with um, us having the contractors still doing the work, but they're not being paid. Um, I'm just hoping that this meeting will bring and shed light to the people that really need to get paid. Uh, these are the people that we call on for emergencies. Um, also, for the last couple of months, within Public Works, we were unable to do some of the things that we need to do as far as patching the streets, um, lights being out. We have over 20 requests for lights to be restored on blocks that have not been paid. These are the things that is necessary and uh, necessity for our residents, me as well. Um, I just want to say to the administration, continue to do, we're gonna to continue to do what we need to do for the residents. We need the residents to wake up and uh, stop believing everything that you see on TV. Um, ask questions. Also, uh, just want to Give some uh, kudos and like to K and M John Pro Tree Services and uh, mm -hmm. also Five Star. I see you over there, Five Star. I thank you all for continuing to doing the work, mm -hmm. even though that you all have not been paid. Also, uh, just want to give some uh, kudos and like to K K and M John Pro Tree Services and uh, so K and M John Pro Tree Services and Five Star are companies that were not being paid. Now, the reason Five Star wasn't being paid was because the village chose not to pay them. The payment was approved. The million dollar check was signed. They chose not to turn it over. Why? Because they don't have $5 million. I guess at this point, based on my math, they probably got about $500,000, which is just about what Jay Morrison had last time he came to his investors. John's Pro Tree Services and K&M. Now, K&M is the name of the guy who owns the tree trim service. I thought it was Raul, but Raul is actually lawn care, one of the 12 lawn care companies. Um, there's a zillion tree trimming services and a zillion lawn care companies. I don't know why. The, the town is five square miles. Okay. Um, it's got to look like a plantation out there with all them trim, tree trimming services and lawn care services out in the streets at the same goddamn time. So K&M was the guy uh, who I speculate his girlfriend came and spoke at the top of the last meeting. He came and spoke at the top of the meeting before that. He met Tiffany Henyard somewhere out in the quote unquote field and they struck a deal for him to do some work that he wants to get $450,000 for, but he has no contract and not even a real invoice. Kind of sort of same thing with John's Pro Tree Services and Five Star Um they did approve it, as I said. Some of what they what they had an issue with and what kept him from getting paid and some of the actual backlog of his payments was because he had submitted bills to Mayor Riley, the previous uh, mayor, who wasn't filling him and blocked a lot of his payments, too. But $850,000 $850, approximately of that million dollars is actually for the ice skating rink. Got slipped in. But let's continue. Uh, also, Five Star, I see you over there. Five Star, I thank you all for continuing to doing the work, mm -hmm. even though that you all have not been Hold paid. On. Also, I lost we track need to seven. do and, uh, us have this curriculum. The money back. All right, you can see someone after the board meeting. Okay, thank all right. you. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone. My name is Demarcus. For the record, this man is high as fuck, which I don't have no problem with. I just wanted to mention it. He does work in a capacity where I think right now he's probably even getting overtime to be at this meeting. So I just want to mention that. I'm 27 year resident as of this month. Um, I want to uh, come shed some lights on some things that's going on in the community um, with the tree trimming. Uh, with um, us having the contractors still doing the work, but they're not being paid. Um, I'm just hoping that this meeting will bring and shed light to the people that really need to get paid. Uh, these are the people that we call on for emergencies. 
Um, also, for the last couple of months, within Public Works, we were unable to do some of the things that we need to do as far as patching the streets, um, lights being out. We have over 20 requests for lights to be restored on blocks that have not been paid. These are the things that is necessary and uh, necessity for our residents, me as well. Um, I just want to say to the administration, continue to do, we're gonna to continue to do what we need to do for the residents. We need the residents to wake up and uh, stop believing everything that you see on TV. Um, ask questions. Also, uh, just want to give some uh, kudos and like to KNM, John Pro Tree Services, and uh, also Five Star. I see you over there. Five Star, I thank you all for continuing to doing the work, even though that you all have not been paid. Um, to the residents that's waiting on these services, continue to uh, bear with us until we receive the material or whatever we need in order to get the stuff done for us, for, for the residents. Uh, thank you, Super Mayor. Continue to do a good job and continue to lead. We need leadership in this village. Um, I'm tired of tip for test stuff. I'm tired of these videos coming out. Show something positive. If you don't like somebody, you just, just come stand with them. It, it doesn't matter. Life is too short. I'm getting tired of this. Been out of 27 years and we need repair. We need progress in the village of Dalton. And that's what I'm here for. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Let me give my quick note to what he said. I was also going back because I needed to mark the time. He started at 21:23. He only took about two minutes to speak. Um, so there was not, nothing going on there. But I, I want to mention, you know, why isn't he upset about the public works people not getting their back pay? He don't seem to care. And, and, and trustee Jason House, I would ask you to wonder, why isn't public works upset that they're not getting back pay? Because they have because Tiffany Henyard has a private agreement with them that she won't share with y'all. Nobody knows what that private agreement is, but she said they know they're not getting paid till next year. Well, how come y'all didn't know that, board? How come he's not concerned about the unpaid bills? The 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 the, the um the bills that Tiffany Henyard owes, making street deals and shit. And how does he know all of this? I mean, he's just a public works guy. How does he know who got paid and who didn't? How could he possibly? So much, uh, residents. That concludes public comment. Next is general announcements. That was it. Now, public comment started at 16 minutes and 7 seconds. It's 23 minutes and 53 seconds. So it hasn't even been a full 15 minutes. A full 16 minutes. Did did they figure out nobody else had nothing to say? We need repair. We need progress in the village of Dalton. And that's what I'm here for. Thank you all. Have a great What is he running for president? <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, uh, residents. Clapping. That concludes public comment. Next is general. It doesn't seem to me as though there was anyone else given the opportunity to speak. Now, I'm not going to call that anything. I'm just going to say that wasn't even 10 minutes. So I don't know what happened there, but okay. Oh, okay. Come on. Okay. Good. How are you? Okay. I was going to say, I know yes. Trina Downs got something to say. Oh, firstly, I noticed when I came in today that the door had to be unlocked. And we have our fire chief here present. Um, I don't think you can lock residents in buildings. We need to be able to get in and out the door if anything were to happen under emergency. Secondly, I want to know who the... Um, attorney is is he the village attorney do we currently have a village attorney 
because everybody keeps saying like he's a prosecuting or prosecutorial attorney. And so who's being prosecuted? Hmm. Anyone being prosecuted? Can you explain your capacity as the attorney, sir? This is public comment. Oh, it's public comment. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll have a minute soon. Clerk, um, are you willing to say why we don't have minutes still? Is it? This is public comment, Clerk. This is not Q&A's public comment. Okay. Yes, Officer Lacey, you were going to say something. Okay. And so, um, outside of that, um, it's a few FOIAs that I'm still waiting from May of 2022 for. Um, basically, those FOIAs consist of um, the billing for the recall on both uh, sides and also other billing and other legal lawsuits. And um, also, um, this is a public meeting. And so unless you have a court order by a judge that certain individuals can't come in, then they shouldn't be being blocked from public meetings at all. Do you guys know anything about that? Because we can't have residents blocked from public meetings unless a judge signs off on that. And um, whew, yeah, I still got one minute. Wow. And so it's some things that need to be addressed, especially um, as far as members of the board and leadership. Um, we have Tammy Brown and Brittany Norwood that had no problem with coming and lying under oath for a year. And so I will be seeking to have you removed from your seats, especially when you show up to court, Tammy, and verbatim say to the judge that I must want you to put your hands on me. I mean, I don't know what public official does that. So um, that needs to be addressed. And so that's all I came in for. Um, the shenanigans are over with. I'll be seeing a lot of people in federal court. Thanks for participating. Thank you. I told y'all Trina Downs ain't taking sides. What I did notice, that meeting in, when did she have that lime green suit on? Was that June? The meeting in June when the trustees adjourned prior to her mayoral report, I do believe it was Trina Downs who got up and was kissing the mayor's ass. And thanking her for all she's done, because at the same time, as you see right now, Trina Downs is not in the comments. Whenever she gets up to speak, Trina Downs in the comments doesn't doesn't participate. But then when she sits back down, Trina Downs starts talking again. You know how that is. So I, I don't know if she don't like the certain trustees without coming out and saying it and truly does support the mayor. But if she don't like nobody, I don't know. I've seen some interesting things. But she does deserve answers to those questions. Those are legitimate questions that she's asking. And there is a difference between public comment and citizens address. Now, what is on the books is citizens address. It gives the it gives the uh person three minutes to address the body and receive a response. And we'll see that in the meetings that the board does without Tiffany Henry present. When they do their special meetings, they do a full citizen's address where they answer questions to the best of their ability at that point. I mean, how many people do you think Keith Freeman is going to stay and talk to after this? Okay. All right, that concludes public comment. Um, next is general announcements. Do anyone have any general announcements? Yeah, I have an announcement. Who's that? Trustee Gore. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Happy Monday. Did she say who is that? Like she can't see? Oh my God. She didn't elevate herself that much. Um, I would first like to invite everyone uh, on behalf of Dalton Park Board of Commissioners. They like to invite you to their seventh annual holiday festive Winter Wonderland. Um, it's on this December, it's December the 16th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's that Saturday. Um, they'll have arts and crafts, games, uh, Santa village, uh, visit, holiday magic, uh, ugly sweater contests, and other surprises. So if you're free, um, it's also in partnership with the Village of Board of Trustees and the clerk. Um, I also like to announce our annual skating party. So for the last two years, I've had an annual skating party um, there in Linwood Skating Rink. Um, we have a tentative date of Thursday, January the 4th, um, 2024. But um, if you are not following the Dalton Trustees page, please do so so that I can uh, give you an 
proper update um, of the date once I confirm it. Um, and um, that will be it for that. The last thing I would like to say is um, here we are. We're two years into this process. I'd like to thank all Dalton residents for their support, uh, for the calls, for the prayers. Um, we're still two years in. There's no RFPs. There's um, all of this work being done without any board approval. Um, we have $110,000 worth of missing credit card receipts that's still missing. Uh, we have, we've been six months without our credit card statements. And we continue uh, to show up to do the work for the people. But it's pretty unfair when you have an administration that continues to with, um, hold this information from you and then ask that you make a vote or a decision, um, ask for you to vote on things that you haven't seen, on receipts that you haven't seen, so you actually have no confirmation whatsoever. Um, but then they ask for board approval. So, uh, residents, I just would like to let you keep you all abreast uh, of the situation and let you know the issue at hand. Um, I thank you all and have a good night. All right, any more? Thank you. Now, here is when they started operating a little bit differently as a board. Because we saw in the last two meetings, Tiffany Henry would take 45 minutes to say whatever she wanted to say, however she wanted to say it, and try to block the trustees from responding to the things that she accused them of. Try to argue them down, berate them, and belittle them. So they understood, okay, if we have to vote to bring the general comment back, then let's go ahead and say what needs to be said before the mayor's report. During the general comment. I love it. Now, Trusty Norwood didn't. Trusty Norwood gave an announcement about this winter wonderland that is set to be a hit at Dalton Park District. And if you've been keeping up with this, you know that Tiffany Henry does not like the Dalton Park District. I still don't know why. Maybe just because she's a control freak. But I think this was the same year, too, that Tiffany Henry wanted to do a $50,000 Christmas tree. General announcement? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, oh, and because of this forum, because this is general announcement and not discussion, Tiffany Henyard does not have a right to respond. Saturday, Saturday, December the 9th, will be the last Tea with the Trustees. This is our last for the year Tea with the Trustees. It's 147th Evers. That's the Lester Long Field House at 930. So we're asking our residents, please attend. This is the last one of the year. We want to go out with a bang. So thank you. All right. Any more? Okay. Mayor, I have a comment. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, I'll, I additionally want to thank um, all the residents for their calls and concerns, feedback. You ain't going to tell me Jason House don't look like he's ready to fight tonight. Um, I heard, um, there are some things that are being mentioned out there about uh, the process for payment. So I do kind of want to walk through um, items that may be paid from the board standpoint. Um, and may, we're, the board is supposed to receive a warrant list, an electronic warrant list, along with the receipts to accompany it. Uh, once the board receives that, we either do an approval or we, dis or we decline to approve. In many instances, we've started getting emails of individuals who have stated they have not gotten checks, yet the board has approved them back in June or July. Um, I'll say this just as an encouragement. That's not me. <laughs> there is always a fire truck somewhere here, but it's not me. <laughs> we are right over here. Because some, and some, some people are, say, are saying that the board they're being informed the board has not approved them and in many cases they've already been approved and yet the port, the check has not been released so if there is a question from the board's perspective of whether or not the bill has been been approved i would encourage those individuals please give me an email at jhouse at vodalton.org and i'll be great I, I will gladly um identify from the board standpoint what has been approved and what has not along with next steps also can be reached via cell phone 708-625-1105. So either method is okay. Uh, but the information, in many cases, the, bu the bills are being approved and the check is still not reaching its end destination. So if there's any question about that, please feel free to reach out. And this occasion, and on this 
meeting. Again, we are trying to make sure we're here to make the proper vote to have the information. However, without receiving the information, we're not in a position to do a vote on many items. Uh, we received partial information for this meeting uh, as of today, because I, I know we've made some conversations about receipts that we haven't had. Uh, this time, we do not have the credit card receipts, uh, credit card statements, as Trustee Norwood mentioned from June through current. This meeting, we do not have an electronic payments warrant list, which is where the credit card statements are at. So we don't have the information needed for that, along with some other items on there. So uh, we do our best and we try to minimize or <laughs> believe it or not, we try to minimize the back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, on some cases when we when we don't have it, um, it turns into something undesirable for the community. So uh, that concludes my comments. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Let me um, let me just speak on what he just said. Um, I would definitely recommend if you're not already uh, trustee Jason House and the rest of you that you either start using your own email server or you start having all your emails forwarded from the VO Dalton server to another email server because but Dr. Nikki Nietzsche Cloud confirmed that Keith Freeman does fuck with the emails from the back office. So just so you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Microsoft Office account um, is something he specifically has access to and can go in and see emails, delete them, modify them, all type of shit. You recognize? Go ahead. Um, I hate that this has to keep going back. He can even change the email settings so that emails from certain senders get blocked and never get to the trustees for real. For, um, in reference to just one thing that they keep saying about um, credit card, but I do want to say that on November 13th, I sent the email to our finance director, uh, Janice Johnson, Michael Delgado, and Mike McGrath, and I copied also um, Trustee House about us not receiving the credit card statements. We had a town hall finance meeting, and I asked Tangenique about the credit cards, and she told me that we don't have a credit card anymore because the trustees cut it off, which I know I'm a sitting trustee, and we haven't passed anything to cut the credit card off. But then to find out that we have an American Express card that was issued to the police department mm -hmm. that now has the current sitting um, Chief. deputy chief's mm -hmm. name on it makes me feel not only violated as a trustee, but blatantly lied to. I pulled the ordinance 17-003, adopting the village transparency policy. What's crazy to me is trustee Stan Brown voted for and Mayor Hingier voted for, but refused to give us the information that we keep asking for. Y'all want us to come sit here, vote on stuff, and absolutely have nothing with it. And then they say, you're lying, you're lying. Of course, it says, whereas, and I'll have copies for anybody that want a copy of it, the 10-point transparency checklist includes, but is not limited to, the following. Elected and administrative officials, contact information, meeting information, calendar, future minutes, board packets, past and present, public record, FOIA submission, FOIA officer contact information, information, budgets, general and special projects, financial audits, salary and benefits, wages, overtime, health, dental, life, pension, contracts, union, private contracts, vendors, board of trustee contracts, lobbying, taxpayer funded lobbying associations, taxes, fees, sales, property, income, and miscellaneous taxes, and the non-priority priority in excess of $9,999.99. As a trustee, I shouldn't have to beg to receive anything that you want me to vote on. I shouldn't have to do it. So then I asked for a digital copy of a budget that you want me to sit here and pass today. And it went to Tangenique, Janice, Keith, Stan Brown, Michael Delgado, and Mike McGrath and still have not received it. 
So as our finance director who makes $90,000 plus a year, I don't understand why we can't get the information and then get an email on Saturday evening at 629 to say we're waiting on the CPA to give us electronic warrant list that we're still paying $33,000 a month for. Mm -hmm. So if somebody can answer the question, I know it's general comment, but I feel it's an insult and an embarrassment right now that y'all would even want us to sit here and pass anything without giving us what we requested. Thank you. All right, you done? All right, go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I'm sorry. Mayor, can I say one more thing? It's uh, Trustee Brown. Time. Oh, okay, go ahead. Thank you, man. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Residents of the village of Dalton. I'd like to say uh, there's going to be a Christmas toy giveaway uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. December the 16th. Tr Trustee, pull your mic up. Pull your mic up. <laughs> Stan, I love you to death many days of the week, but that is not your color, honey. Maybe orange, maybe rust, copper, excuse me, like a marigold. Maybe even like a Persian blue, but definitely not that that green. I'd like to say that there's going to be a Christmas toy giveaway December the 16th from 10 a.m. Uh, to 3 p.m. at 14900 Greenwood in Dalton. There's going to be food fun, hot chocolate pictures with Santa, music and toys. There's going to be a toy giveaway December the 16th. Also, if there is any need of assistance, the childship is here to help. <clears throat> General assistance, basic needs, <laughs> utility assistance, rental assistance, mortgage assistance, burial assistance, mental health assistance. Mental health is taking a toll on us, ladies and gentlemen, and it's here, and it's something to be dealt with. So please don't turn a dead eye to when we talk about mental health. Walk-in is accepted from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call 596-708-596-6040, extension 3132, why the 3135. Also, the township has a food pantry. Every Wednesday at 15340 Page in Harvey, Illinois, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We also offer senior food box delivery service available upon request. For more information, Call 708-596-6040, extension 3180. You must be a Thorn Township resident to participate. Also, the township is offering transportation service to any senior over the age of 60. We'll ride you, drive you, wait for you, anywhere in the township area. I'm sorry. Also, I'm sorry y'all got to listen to this bullshit. But I just want to see if he adds anything to his comments. Thorn Township offers computer lab opening Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at 14323 South Halsted in Riverdale. That's computer lab opening for a lot of our youth. Also, at the school program, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., Thorn Township Youth Center and Family Service Center. Enrollment now for Thorn Township. Scan the barcode. I have the flies. If anyone would like to have one, you scan the barcodes and put you right there. Also, we have a super duper program going, the Thorn Township. It's the Tech Savvy class for our seniors from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thursday, November 30th, and every Thursday of each month. Technology class is open to all Thorn Township residents. If you're a Thorn Township resident, you can come get this Tech Savvy class. Also, also, Thorn Township will have free bingo, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Every third shit. Thursday of every month. Morning Thorn shit. Township at the lower level at 333 East 162nd Street. Big bingo every third Thursday of every month. Also, when the visitor has talent, there's going to be showtime at the Apollo, December the 9th. Ages 5 through 12. 
from 5 p.m. Y'all, I swear, today my daughter and I were watching The Wiz, which I do all the time. And Eveline said, this ain't no amateur night. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. To 9 p.m. at Thorn Township, lower level, 333 East 162nd Street in South Holland. Amateur night competition showcasing your special talent, whether it's singing, dancing, rap, or comedy on stage before a live audience. Performance will be judged by how loud the audience chat and cheers and winners receive prizes from $250 to $2,500. Register now. Come join the fun. Last but not least, Thorn Township, there will be Township Talk. With Supervisor <sighs> Tiffany Henry. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., fourth Wednesday of every month. Thorn Township, lower level, 333 East 162nd Street. Join the conversations every month, community engagement and transparency. Get involved, hear the facts, let your voice be heard. And for that last note, we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. That's at Thorn Township, 333 East 162nd Street. Township talk. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Y'all have no notes. All that bullshit spoke for itself. We see what his role is here. Um, next Mayor. on the agenda, we have mayor's report. Mayor. So a couple things. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, you said it was trustee stand, but right. I had one you thing had, now. You had your turn, so we're moving on now. So now. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn the trustee. Meeting. You're out of order. It's time for mayor's report. I say, and I listen to y'all. And now it's the mayor's report. That's so disrespectful. Y'all gotta grow up. Just cause y'all. Oh, now I remember why this meeting was so short. <laughs> and have y'all way. Y'all shouldn't act this way. Y'all said all that stuff didn't mean a word of it. And then you sat here and you did this. That ain't how this go. Y'all do not run the meeting. You should have thought about that before so you had your administrator you, don't give us the information. You, let me finish my, my statement. So it's mayor's report. So it's a lot of great things that we have. There's a motion on the floor to uh, um, adjourn the meeting. She, she act like she didn't hear it, but it's clearly there. I have here in the village of Dalton. And today I want you guys to hear what's are going voting. on. Um, Clerk Key, I did not say call any row. It's so disrespectful. So I'm going to tell you about the things that's going on. Uh, first, I want to make sure that the residents I, of Dalton know about uh, the help that's here. FEMA is here in the community, and we are here to help you uh, with your storm. Uh, thanks to my proclamation that I made here in Dalton and the proclamation I made at the township, we have a couple things for you. This will be a site at the village, and it will be a site at the township. So I want you guys to know to come and get all the help that you need. So please make sure you come out. Um, September 17th was the day that everybody was. There it is. Sometimes that's just what you got to motherfucking do. Okay? It ain't the first time. It ain't the last time. But every once in a while it needs to be done. I'm asking about. I do appreciate you guys because at the end of the day, I'm always doing the work, as you can see. No matter how disrespectful people can be or will be, I'm always stand strong. I'm always stay here for the people. So as I was saying, this is a location and the other location will be at um, the township and it will be at the Riverdale location on Halstead. So please come out. I'm making it uh, feasible for you from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And just to make it clear, the trustees did not walk out. They adjourn the meeting just like every other meeting. A meeting does not adjourn without a trustee motion, a trustee second, and the majority vote. So just like they start the meeting, they end the meeting. Now, she's currently having a secret squirrel meeting, or as those of us professionally put it, an illegal meeting. It will be on Saturday and Sunday at those times. And then Monday through Friday, it will be from 7 a.m. And, 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 and I'm just going to break in here. This woman is 43 minutes. She going to keep these people hostage for another, what, 47 minutes? I'm going to watch it, though. Come on, let's go. To 3 p.m. at the Riverdale location. Here in the Village Hall, it will be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday only. Only because we have business to take. Um, next, 
Uh, I want to thank Tony uh, Perkwinkle because she was so helpful. I want to thank the governor and thank the president for signing off because I know you guys all call about the flood and how bad it was and how um, basically the mold was growing in your house. So my heart goes out to you because you guys are moms, dads, parents. So I just, man, the struggle's there. So trust me, I love y'all about just staying the course. Um, next. I would like people to know that we will be sending a robocall out, a text blast out, and we will let you know about the qualifications for FEMA because we didn't want to announce it due to the fact we didn't have all the information. I do know that they will be setting up sites throughout Cook County. I just want to tell you about the sites that's here for you. Um, next, our tree lighting. Our tree lighting was um, yesterday. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I want to thank Channel 7. Channel 7 came out and Channel 7. Um, after this bitch is crying on the inside. I'm going to tell you something about a Tiffany. I have never met a Tiffany that wasn't too attached. I have never met a Tiffany who didn't know how to detach. Or that knew how to detach, rather. She is crying on the inside. She is not having a good day. She wore her best suit and her new earrings. Brandon, stop putting her in them big ass earrings. They just make her look old. And I know you got to cover up the fact that she's wearing an earpiece so she can hear somebody talk to her. But those earrings are not a look, okay? It's 2024. Diamond studs are perfectly fine. It's okay. And they don't have to be big. Wealth whispers, honey. Oh, my God. So, anyway... And I know Chicago got its own style and everything, too, but she's still a mayor. She's still very much a mayor. Um, she's not having a very good day, and she's having a hard time admitting it. So she's just going to keep talking real fast. To whoever but will there will be setting up sites throughout Cook County. I just want to tell you about the sites that's here for you. Um, next, our tree lighting. Our tree lighting was um, yesterday. It was a whole lot of fun. Uh, I want to thank Channel 7. Channel 7 came out and Channel 7 um, actually gave us good press. So give it up Channel 7, y'all. We was on Channel 7. <laughs> So I want to thank them for that because they came out and put us in a great, great light for the things we truly do in our community. And so I hope you guys are see, able to see also that some of that taxpayer money is going toward what appears to be veneers. There's give back in Unity Amos community. The kids was out there. They had a, a blast. Uh, it was starting to rain a little bit, but we stayed the course and we stayed outside. Uh, we had hot chocolate. We had sauna. We had the igloos out, the bubbles. All you had to do was just come out and um, see the scenery. I love that. And then I want to thank Five Star because Five Star helped build uh, Greenwood Falls, uh, just ice rink over there. So it was really, really epic. I told you. $850,000. That went to five star was for the concrete at the ice skating rink and the road skating rink. She had the village of Dalton pay for it. I believe that's called embezzlement. So if you missed it, go by when you leave here, see the tree lighting. Because in the beginning, we had the little Charlie Brown tree. And then in the end, we end up with a mega tree. So I want to thank uh, those that contributed to that because the board wouldn't allow for you guys to get a tree last year. And that was really heartbreaking because I, those that have kids, they really love that. I remember back in the day when my parents used to bring me to Dalton. Just well, they were also at, um, I believe, a $2.5 million deficit last year, too. That's not really smart to be getting a $50,000 Christmas tree. See the, the lights on the houses and they just drove through the communities. And as a kid, you're just like, wow, oh my God. So now we had the opportunity to do the same for our kids. So thank you again for those that help um, with the tree. Um, on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. <clears throat> We had two water main breaks the day before Thanksgiving. Oh so I'm shocked you didn't talk about this, Demarcus. Um, I give appreciation and kudos to Public Works because they was out there taking care of the business. Even though the board voted not to pay certain vendors, as he was stating in his speech, about how was they going to fix it. At the end of the day, no matter what happened, y'all called the mayor. Y'all asked the mayor how is things going to get fixed. And I take it. Like to heart because y'all live here. The day before Thanksgiving, people had families coming in and they didn't have no water. But my team, my crew, Public Works, they stayed out there all night. It was cold as ever. And they fixed that one water main break. And then guess what happened? Another one happened. 
So they stayed out there all night. We had to take them hot chocolate, things of that nature. But I just love y'all. So y'all give it up, Public Works. Without them, guys, y'all would have the water. Thank you, PW. Thank you. Thank you. I so love y'all for that. Um, that's what great team are about. That's what teammanship is about. Um, that's what people that want to work together, no matter who don't like who, or who don't get along. At the end of the day, we all have a job to do, and that is service the people. So I just want to show y'all that through all, all the controversy, we're going to still keep pushing through because we still doing it. As you can see, we winning everything. We ain't lost not one lawsuit. And I don't understand how people got so much to say that ain't done enough for three years, y'all. Three years. Open your eyes. Go back and check it out. If people ain't did enough for three years, what makes you think they're going to do something now? Because it's election time? Come on, wake up. Wake up. Y'all know that I love y'all. Y'all know that I care about what I grew up at. And that's why I stand in the fire. Anybody else would have been ran. Because y'all asked me this. And this is what a lady asked me. Tiddy, why you just stay here? I said, because I care. I said, I grew here. They flew here. That's my slogan. Because at the end of the day, a person that live here, they're going to care more. That's like a person that work in a community that they live in. They're going to pick paper up. They're going to make sure the sweepers. She said she grew here and they flew here. Like we all didn't hear that girl say that on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. What's her name? The girl that couldn't seem to keep her kids. Uh, Candy Burns' cousin. I can't remember her name. She can't stay relevant long enough. She said that first because she was jealous because good rappers were coming to Atlanta and getting more credit and more shine and better deals than she was because she couldn't keep her life together long enough to stay in the business. So she tried to attack another rapper, Tokyo Tony, who has only had like two singles. Leave the girl alone. Excuse me. She was the one that was like, that's my best friend. That's my best friend. You better. You better. I love her. She's a sweetheart. Listen, she tried to attack Tokyo Tony at a, um, I think they were at a showcase. And she started saying, I grew here, she flew here. Okay, that's where that phrase was supposed to live and die. Because that's how corny it is. But we got this one right here. Who has carried it on into stupidity. Down the street, they care more. It's just like the snow removal. We got snow removal in our town. Y'all know all the other towns jealous of y'all. They mad and they want me to put in all the other towns. I told them I'm not their mayor. I told them I'm the mayor of Dalton. That's something that I created when I got here in 2021. So the snow program is working. It's, all, it's for all seniors. Do not get out there. I repeat, do not get out there in that cold, in that snow, and bent over with your back. Please, whatever you do, because a lot of people have heart attacks. As long as you put her name in your window, you will get your driveway snow plowed. Like they don't have a list of the houses. That's when they try to pick that heavy snow up. Little do people know. So just call us. We'll put you on a list and we're going to make a way. And again, that's PW. That's in public works. Public works come out and they make sure they get to every single house. So those are the things that I do as your mayor and my team do, but it never gets shadow in the light. It's like people are what? so obsessed with the mess. I don't like messy people. I just don't. What? I would never sit at a table with a messy person. What? You would never hear me talking about people because I don't care. Why? Because I got things to do. When you got things to do and you live in your life and you making sure you bring things back to your community like that $15 million. What? Talk about that. But y'all not. Where is Y'all all lip boxing. That's it. Everybody going to always have an opinion of somebody, but you're not willing to step in their shoes to see what growth looks like, oh, what God. progress looks like. And I think I'm doing a damn good job. I what y'all think? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've ever followed speakers and you watch them speak all the time, you know that they know there are certain things. Ooh, that's an ugly woman. I didn't do nothing to that picture. All I did was zoom it out. That's all I did was zoom out. Ooh. If you've ever watched, hold on. <laughs> if you've ever followed speakers, then you know there are certain things they say that they know gets the crowd going. And you'll notice that she'll always say, I think I'm doing a damn good job. What y'all think? Thank you. Thank you. But when people tell you you're not doing a damn good job, how come you don't, how come you don't um, believe that shit? Hold on. Whew. That is ugly. Ooh, it don't even get better. I wouldn't even care how ugly she was if she wasn't a horrible person. I would really find the beauty in her because I'm that powerful.
She looked like Arsenio Hall. <laughs> so next, I want to say to a couple of statements that the board made. And it's shame. I told you I got babies on my board. I think y'all need to send us some uh, Similac and some bottles, please, pacifiers. So the board approved um, one of the checks, and that's what five star, and I know that's probably why you're here today. They approved the check back in the past. I don't have the exact date. It was and September. I don't know for those that have been watching off. They approved the check in June of 20, I want to say it was June 5th, 2023. Board meetings. Uh, Trustee Jason House and Clark no, Keith. No, sorry. It was May. May 17th on the bank account um, that they hijacked. I told y'all about that. They will be going to jail for that because that is a felony. Little do y'all know. You cannot walk in the bank and basically take someone off a million dollar bank account, which they did. So you know it's all a setup from the bank to the trustees to the clerk. So you'll see that coming soon. Stay tuned. I keep telling y'all, don't work. Y'all seen anything coming? As far as we know so far, uh, it's a wrap. She hasn't been added back to the bank account. They, The judge found that they did nothing wrong. She gets um the final say on <laughs> she gets the final say on the warrant list, but she's not on the bank account. About what's going on. Watch how I finish. Mark my words. So they approved it. The board. This is when trustee Tammy Brown flipped on them and four people voted to pay, especially five star, all the vendors that was on the list. Now remind y'all, they keep pointing fingers, but they're not telling you facts. Facts is I was not on the bank account, nor was anybody from my administration. The people that had total control. Were That's a lie. Keith Freeman, Tangenique Miller, and Janice Johnson had administrative control of the bank account. They were moving money in and out of the bank account, doing wire transfers, writing checks, all type of shit. The These are lies. And Jason House, they did not sign that man's check. They did not sign several other people's check. So then they want to now today place blame on us. We weren't in control of no bank account to pay anybody. Literally, I just got back on a bank account. I sent something out to all the residents in Dalton, and I let you guys know what was going on. And a lot of people was um, appalled that that happened in their own backyard. So when people want to just get traction off of fake news, uh, false stories, things of that nature, y'all should ask your question why. What was your, your antennas three years ago? Right when I got in the seat, it'd been nothing but turmoil because people want to control. They thought I was a young, naive woman that was going to sit here and do what they say. I'm no puppet. But as you saw... What she's telling you is she promised Chris Gonzalez at Thornton Township that she would do whatever they said. She probably said, I'm young. I'll take y'all's direction. And then she turned on them. Well, that didn't happen in Dalton. What happened in Dalton was she started out lying about, you guys know. Trustee Tammy Brown is a public. She just said that she don't read. So if she don't read, how does she know how to vote when she come here? Ask yourself that. That means she are told how to vote. She, she said she didn't read her package when the news was here. So all I can do is point facts out to you and hopefully you read them and understand what's going on here in Village of Dalton. Because as I say, when the hate don't work, they start telling lies. Next, I want to show y'all a couple things that we got going on. Um, this was our end of the year, and I just want to show you the progress in our village. Uh, we did a whole lot of things as it relate to progress and growth, and we got a video just to show you so you can keep up with us. Because a lot of people don't know. They just hear things, but I want to show you. Seeing is believing, believing instead of you just hearing. Take your time, uh, if you could play the video, please. Take a breath, bitch. Shit. Somebody who loves me a lot told me, if you start messing up, slow down. Just take a breath. Stop talking. Shit. <laughs> I would appreciate that. And as y'all can see, that was the plan all along to leave an actual schedule board meeting. Is that, is that the beginning, James? <laughs> she, is, she is feeling some type of way, y'all. She is feeling some type of way, y'all. They messed up her whole plan. She was going to argue them down that whole meeting. But she wore, she rented that suit. So she has to um continue to wear it. Okay, that's the Charlie Brown Christmas tree we had. That was the first one. That's when we first put the ice rink down. This is the kids skating on the ice rink. You see real ice, real skates. This is new police officers here in the village of Dalton. 
We got LED lights to stop at the stop sign. We turned the Wentworth into a one-way. This is us demoing properties throughout Dalton. Speed bumps on all the schools. This is our Easter celebration. This is where the basketball courts we reopen. As y'all can see, I am so relatable to the kids. They know who a mayor is. This is me getting um, another. She proud as a mayor being relatable to kids because she don't understand her role. Position. This is we paving the alleys. <laughs> this is at Just Ice Rink. That's more sidewalks being up. What you're not about to do is sit here and tell me that the people you see that say they support Tiffany Henyard don't look like they haven't struggled with a drug addiction. You are not going to tell me that DeMarcus, Stacy, Janice Johnson, Tangenique Miller, Kim. You're not going to tell me that people don't struggle with a drug addiction and you can't see it. And these, these organizations that come up and thank her so very kindly for the trim treving services. That man looked like he was high right now and been out there. I'm not just talking about cannabis. I'm talking about something a lot more experimental that I don't know nothing about. When back in the day, you had to do 50-50. It's all about the need. Mental health tours we do. I go into all the schools, grandma and high schools. I talk to the kids. I relate to the kids. I come on a level and I talk about issues. And then they go and they tell us and we tell the parents. What? And we get them help. This is the Just Ice course right here. What? Where? Where's the track record for this help? Where's the quantitative record of these kids telling you something, you going telling their parents and then you getting them help? Because you say that, but that's a job in and of itself. You are such a liar. This is me taking Lincoln School. We walked all the way to the courts. Where they do that at? We got the largest ice rink in the state. Bigger than Rock. The only people that walk all the way to the courts are people dumb enough to walk into a vacant, a vacant yard and not expect mysises to run up their leg. Your town is five miles wide. Not even that. 4.96 square miles as the crow flies. And you're saying that you walked to the basketball court from where? <laughs> Fella. It's all my babies. These are the upcoming projects. The water parks, the food truck with the pavilion, the doggy park, the skate park. And also Veterans Park, which will be happening early this upcoming year. Nope. Not New happy. Fireman, which is much needed. Thank you, Chief McCain. But these are the things we do, but they don't tell y'all a show. Y'all remember when this happened? We had that bad storm, and now we're fixed. How many drug busts have happened in Dalton in 2024? 2023? We brought back the parade. It's been over a decade since we had the parade. Over more, 10 years. More but this is what I do as your mayor. Unity, unity, kids, kids. They are the future. This is. I love you guys. Crazy. I hear you. Uh, the weather then caught up with us. So we will start that next season in March, right, Ron? About March? Okay. So about March, you will see alley still being done, street repavement, and also sidewalks. Like I said before in the past, they made you pay 50% for a sidewalk. I don't know where they do that at, but they did it here in the village of Dalton. I don't feel you should have to pay for something that's a public way. Uh, meaning it's not owned by you. Can't take it with you. Your house is there. Um, I just think people should look at that. She is really making the administration and the attorney stay and the people stay through a, an illegal meeting the meeting is no longer in existence it was adjourned 
Um, we also have seen uh, an increase in uh, property values along Greenwood Falls. So if you ain't bought a house, go buy a house along Greenwood Falls, but we are developing that area. So a lot of people have been coming in and out of town, purchasing things there. The downtown area, we will be fixing as well. We want this to look like um, Orland and all them other towns um, um, that people go to. Bolingbrook, I say them too, because that's a lot of people that go there. If you ever been there, it's so beautiful. But you got mom and pop stores. They don't have all these liquor stores or liquor establishments. We got to want better, guys. We got to do better and want better. But you cannot want better if you're not willing to do better. We got to be willing to change. And I get it. Change is hard. But change is needed right now in the village of Dalton. And we have to get our own way in order to produce change. So I thank you again for always listening to me. Um, I'm your man forever. And I love y'all. I'm always been on for y'all. So thank you. Okay, next we have Ron, the engineer. We're going to have you next. And I, and I love y'all. I'm always put on for y'all. So thank you. It's your, it's your report. It's yours now. Okay, next we have Ron, the engineer. We're going to have you next. And then we'll do Freeman. <laughs> she's actually she's actually still trying to have this meeting y'all without a quorum there okay good evening mayor trustees department heads and residents from the village of Dalton shut up Ryan um just like the mayor alluded to, um, weather has caught up with us. We're winterizing projects right now. We will start back up in the spring and we'll be doing sidewalk projects, alley projects, and also resurfacing projects. Um, the upper, the bigger projects that are on the horizon for next year, um, the state will be doing 142nd Street. Uh, the village did apply for grant funding to the tune of $1.8 million to do 154th Street. So that project will happen uh, next spring. We'll be finishing up the water main project. There's a lot of new exciting uh, projects that we have. Uh, we'll be embarking on in 2024. Besides the um, uh, water meter replacement project, we're also uh, going to be helping uh, Public Works and the Fire Department with a $200,000 grant from DCO to replace fire hydrants throughout the village of Dalton. So those are just some of the exciting things that we're doing. I have a couple of uh, exhibits here that show the improvements that were done, the sidewalk, alley, water mains. So uh, we're going to put together a collage of photos as well so all the residents can see all the improvements that we uh, have been doing throughout the village over the past three years. Yeah. Th thank you so thank much you. for that. So you will see how. Um, the progress is going like say fancy was on the west side or the east side. He has like little dots saying that we did this street or we did this alley. We did these sidewalks. So you can keep up with the progress, how we keep up with it. And then the next uh, list of sidewalks, alleys and streets that's coming up. So if you have not gotten on the list or let us know about your street or alley or sidewalk, please send an email. Let us know so we can add you to the list. But again, it's going to take time. And I tell everybody it didn't happen like this overnight. It's going to take time time to fix it. And I think we've been doing great with the progress as it relates to what we have to deal with, as you can see with board members that actually work with you. So again, I appreciate Trustee Stan Brown and I appreciate Trustee Andrew Holmes for always uh, staying here and uh, making sure they vote for the people. So all those things are possible because of people like that, that want to see the growth in our time where we all live in. Uh, next on the agenda, we have... No, uh, no, no, no. We have to talk about why Ron keeps talking about these fire hydrants and these water meters, but it's 2024 and this stuff hasn't come to fruition yet. You still talk about money coming, but there's a construction strike in Cook County. So nobody's doing construction. And that $1.8 million grant didn't come through. Village Administrator's Report. Good evening, everyone. Um, First, I'd like to announce the estimates for the um, 2022 uh, tax levy extension. So we have uh, for the operating levy, the 2022 tax levy extended was $11,136, uh, excuse me, $11,136,531 with the requested 4.99% increase. The new operating uh, levy amount for 2023 
is $11,692,244. For the debt service based on the debt schedules and with the assumption that the Homewood Disposal Bond will be for the same amount as the 2022 tax levy, $1,144,455, the debt service levy decreased by one uh one hundred and five uh one hundred and five thousand six hundred and one dollars from four million uh four million three hundred and fifteen thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars to four million two hundred and nine thousand eight two hundred uh excuse me eight hundred and thirty five dollars as a reminder you should have not uh you should have not issued your home with disposal bond for this year this results in the total 2023 estimated tax levy of the amount of $15,902,079, which was an increase of 500, 400, excuse me, $450,112 from the prior year amount of $15,451,967. Um, that is the estimates for this year. Hopefully we will get the tax levy, levy passed on, uh, I think it's scheduled for December 26th at a special meeting. Uh, I'd also like to talk about just a couple of things that the trustees discussed uh, before their um, well abrupt uh, before they leave abruptly, um, they receive electronic warrant lists every month. The electronic warrant list is a detailed list of all of the credit card uses that we have. Uh, we receive credit card statements um, months after we actually make the charges, which is why we take a electronic copy and pass it down to the board. We download that offline. And then we give them a copy of the statements as they come in. Um, this idea that they had not received those electronic uh, warrants um, is pretty ridiculous seeing as though they passed one every single month before that. Every single month prior to this month, they passed an electronic warrant list, which is a copy of, uh, excuse me, which is a list of all of the electronic charges and or credit card charges. The second thing is, is that there was a statement that was made that said that um, for whatever reason, the board did not cancel the um, credit card. And that's that's completely false. Um, when the board decided, when the four outliers from the board, and uh, this does not include Trustee Brown or Trustee Holmes, decided that they wanted to uh, take over the bank account without the um, without uh, letting anyone know from our financial uh, our finance department, what they did was is they essentially took over all of the accounts, not just the bank accounts. Those included the credit accounts. And so uh, in an effort to stop us from providing services for you guys, like cutting trees and uh, uh, putting down concrete, side, you know, sidewalks, um, you know, paving streets, um, they cut off service to that credit card um, and other credit cards. Um, this, There's also one more thing that they said, which was completely untrue, which is, um, they had no idea that the police department had uh, a credit card. I think that that's completely, we know that that's completely false because not only do they approve an electronic warrant list that says that this is the police department credit card, but there are several emails back and forth from myself, uh, from several trustees about the police department credit card and its uses. And obviously we would not keep a credit card in the name of the former chief. If he's no longer with us, the credit card would be in the name of the current chief. So uh, when you listen to the, sort of the things that they say, they try to make a, you know, a mockery of, of you guys. And they try to, I don't know, I don't want to call it brainwash, but they try to brainwash you guys. And they just throw out these statements as if no one, you know, wants to question it. I think it's uh, pertinent for you guys to ask us important questions. Really listen to what they say. Really, really listen to what they say, because it's important. Um, and make sure that for whatever reason, um, that if you do have any questions, reach out to my office or someone in one of our offices, because we always were beyond willing to ask, answer any questions. Uh, thank you for your time, Mary, and I appreciate it. <clears throat> Y'all, all I have to say is the lies. Y'all know. Okay, next we have um, Chief, Chief Lacey. You ready? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Um, before I get started, I want to say uh, thank you for letting the police department operate as a police department. Uh, prior prior to uh, now, our equipment was dilapidated. We didn't have the resources that we have. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of myself and the police department for letting us operate 
as a police department and the equipment that we're getting for the police department. That being said, the police department responded to 1,939 calls uh, for service uh, in the month of November. Uh, we also, uh, the police department also wrote parking citations in the amount of 400 and 641, state citations 107, red light citations 5,126. Uh, motor thefts are down, vehicle thefts are down, burglaries are down. Um, that would be the gist of my report. However, Madam Mayor, if I can, I want to add uh, that uh, I know it is cold outside and people have a tendency to get in their car and start it and go back in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as uh, on the behalf of the police department, we're asking that you don't do that. Sometimes it's better to just get in a cold car unless you got an automatic starter. Uh, and that way, when you go back outside, your car is there. So we encourage you not to start your car and run into the house and and, uh, and your car is not there when you come back. Also, we also have the community policing meeting tomorrow. That would be at six o'clock at 14900 Greenwood. And the last one that we had was a success. And we, we encourage everybody to come and voice their opinion and the needs that they may have so we can improve the community. Um, one thing I do wanna say that the police department, uh, and I'm really proud of the police department, uh, Madam Mayor, they do an excellent job. Um, that we are cleaning up as far the village as far as abandoned vehicles uh, in the village. So I encourage people to not uh, have vehicles sitting there for a long period of time to where they're on flats or whatever may, the reason may be that we are uh, seven day towing the cars. And at that point, the vehicle, the vehicle will be towed. So I encourage people to remove abandoned vehicles from around their, their home because uh, so, we are cleaning the village up. And this helps public works. This helps public works as far as when they um, have to plow or things that they may do. So I encourage that. Uh, that being said, Madam Mayor, that's the end of my report. All right, thank you. Next we have, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, uh, Madam Lacey. I'm looking at the bills and, and what did come up in a couple of weeks ago that one of the trustees was talking about a McDonald bill or somebody spent something to get a McDonald's. Can you speak in the mic so that the um, camera can get it? Thank you. What was said in one of the uh, <clears throat> meetings, uh, they were talking about the bills, and it was talking about, you know, going to McDonald's, Duck and Donuts. <clears throat> as as an officer, do you guys get any food for inmates? We do. We we have an account with McDonald's and certain vendors to where we have to feed the prisoners per state law. Yeah. Because that was one of the questions that was thrown out about some of the bills that. Um, some of the trustees are saying they're not going to pay and they're going to pay others. But hmm. just as the uh, police department, they got a job they have to do on a daily basis. And that's part of their job is to make sure you can't, you got to, well, I can't speak on that, but you have to do with the inmates. And I'm just looking at the bills right here and I'm looking at inmate a meal for $7 or $8. I mean, so they have to get fed. And this was being taken out. So my thing over I like to see all bills getting paid. <clears throat> I don't like the idea when we have to listen to a trustee take out 10, 15, 20 different bills that they're going to pay these bills and not that bill. That's totally unfair. Sound like you discriminate. And um, we get letters and emails and texts coming from individuals that saying they wait for their money. And, and I just say to you individuals, we want you to get paid. This shenanigan that's going on is totally unfair, unethical. It's not respecting you guys. Uh, and I'd like to see you getting paid. If I was able to pay everything by my one vote, you would have your money. Uh, this is work that has been done. I mean, if anyone here that's been involved, and I hear people say they've been in 27 years, 28 years, 29, 30 years, they should be able to see the improvement. It's just automatic. Mm -hmm. Goes from 146 in Indiana to 146 in uh, Maple. Whole street been paid. Mm -hmm. That's over about a mile worth of pavement. Go over here to 143rd in Ingleside. Alley's been paid. Yep. Alley's, I've been here since 33 years. Live on the next block from Mass Shaw. We never had Alley's paid. Mm -hmm. When they were saying 50 50, we was excited. <laughs> I was tickled pink when I heard, oh, 50 50. Ooh, we get our uh, front, front side paid. I got a tree that my sidewalk is up like that. And Lord knows, I hate for anybody to have to come walking or on the cane or on a walker or rolling on a uh, rollers. You can't make it past my house. So these are things that's been here 
for years. And these past two, three years that's been going on, it's been totally unfair because there's some trustees that's been up here. And I got to say, Jason House, you've been here six years. Six mm -hmm. years. What were you doing three years ago, mm -hmm. four years ago? So well, everything that's coming out now, and that's totally unfair. It doesn't make a difference to who's the mayor right now. Picking up what's been happening in the past is totally unfair to the residents. And right now, you residents, you guys get hoodwinked, bamboos, and all them other things that go with that. That's what's happening right now. Because we're just playing with numbers right now. If if you got individuals that they don't mind you paying them in payments, let's do that. Don't say, I'm not going to pay the bills if you don't pay them all at one time. That's totally unfair. You wouldn't, you don't sit at your kitchen table and do your bills like that. You sit there and you start, well, I'm going to pay this one. I'm going to give a little here. Let me call them, tell them, can I give them a little third of it? That's what we do when we pay bills. Who so it's the same that? thing here. So it's totally Wait a unfair. Minute. It, is, is that how he... Is that how he manages his finances? I mean, I would think on a postman's salary, he'd be able to pay his bills. He's talking about chinting off a little bit, making payment arrangements, which is bad for your credit and adds to your interest overall. Oh. To hold this administration. This right here is what Trina... Part of what Trina Downs means, I'm assuming that's her name, when she says plantation politics. This is some hood shit. And look at Lacey's face. This man just admitted to some dumb shit. Yeah, six years. Mm -hmm. What were you doing three years ago, four mm -hmm. years ago? So well, everything is coming out now. And that's what time y'all think Lacey start his work day? About 5 30 a.m. They said he was out there early in the morning giving people tickets. The meeting before that. On a Monday morning. Totally unfair. It doesn't make a difference to who's the mayor right now. Picking up what's been happening in the past is totally unfair to the residents. And right now, you residents, you guys get hoodwinked, bamboos, and all them other things that go with that. That's what's happening right now. Because we're just playing with numbers right now. If, if you got individuals that... They don't mind you paying them in payments. Let's do that. Don't say, I'm not going to pay the bills if you don't pay them all at one time. That's totally unfair. You wouldn't, You don't sit at your kitchen table and do your bills like that. You sit there and you start, well, I'm going to pay this one. I'm going to give a little here. Let me call them, tell them, can I give them a little third of it? That's what we do when we pay bills. So it's the same thing here. So it's totally unfair <laughs> to hold this administration to the bar. To get everything paid and taken care of in two years. Wait, you see Lacey's face while he listened to that? He's like, what, nigga? Who does that? <laughs> How old are you over here not paying your bills in full? <laughs> really unfair. Let's be for real. We got individuals that's coming here. We got over 2,000, no, 20,000 individuals that's coming here to live. And we got people walking out. We mm -hmm. got people trying to just get bust to come here. To get and do what we're doing here, we got people walking out. That's totally unfair. Let's be for real, ladies and gentlemen. Some things you may not like the person that's doing these things, but look at what's been happening. I read off some so much good information here. I don't know if people was frowning or like it, but I say some of this stuff here. You need to go ahead on it and get some of this here because you paid for some of this here as a taxpayer. There's some good stuff here. A lot of good things are actually happening. We need to take advantage of what we have here now. <laughs> Because it's totally unfair to individuals that want to get it, but want to save faith with individuals that's having an illegal meeting yeah. in Dalton Park. Yeah. This is where you meet at and do just what you're supposed to do. Voice your opinion here. Don't take your meeting somewhere else. And shame on So that means when Tiffany Henriot was inaugurated as mayor at Dalton Park, that was an illegal meeting too? And that was an illegal inauguration? So we don't have to worry about none of this, not a recall or nothing that's over. She can leave. Dalton Park for letting that happen in their facility. That's wrong. Messy people. We trying to take care of business here. And I say my fellow constituent uh, trustee should have stayed here and, and do what you normally do. Vote yeah or nay. Yep. That's what you're supposed to do. Finish it out. But you weren't elected to walk out of meetings. You yep. weren't elected to do it. They want them to sit there and undergo and deal with and manipulate through and strategize around abuse. And what they did was gray rock her. And that's exactly what they were supposed to do. This is my second go round as a trustee. And I know I've been a 
a dog good trustee because I'm looking out here. Some people call me anytime they want to call me. Come pick up your sign out in front of my house. Mm-hmm. I need to see a whole fix. I go beg and try to get some fixed individual. It's just totally unfair for trustees to do what they're doing to the residents coming when they want, go somewhere else and have meetings. That's totally unfair. They weren't elected to do that. They didn't tell you that at the poll. Well, watch out and walk out some of these meetings on them now, so be prepared. <laughs> That's totally unfair. They did not walk out of the meeting. They voted to adjourn the meeting. They did not. None of their agenda items were placed on the agenda anyway. So what the fuck they gonna sit there for? They didn't walk out of the meeting. They legally adjourned the meeting. That's a power that you have as a trustee. To motion that the meeting be adjourned, second, and vote. The meetings, now you're sitting in an illegal meeting, Stan Browns. Yeah. Let's take care of business. I've been here five months. I'm dealing with bills that haven't been paid since 2018, yeah. 2019, mm-hmm. 2020, 2021. Yeah. That's totally unfair. Totally unfair. So I got to make a decision on it. I was told, oh, you just said yes, yes, yes with the mayor. I'm, I'm for paying bills. Yes. Pay the bills. Let's get together on what we're going to vote on. We having these meetings over at Dalton Park. Andrew Holmes, have you been invited in those meetings? What meeting? <laughs> I haven't been invited to a meeting. The mayor haven't been invited to a meeting. That's totally unfair. But I got to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I kind of got on my soapbox. Yeah. It's getting irritating. And what we're doing here, we steady fighting something that's totally unfair to the residents. Yeah. Totally unfair. And I don't want to take away from that. I'm still a resident here. And I pay the same high taxes everybody else paid. I got an alley look like Vietnam. Mm. I got heels in front of my house. The tree stump is just steady coming up. I told y'all. But I'm still fighting. I told y'all Dalton look like shit. Don't get mad at me. He just said it too. Now here for other people to get service and not me. <laughs> just so happened December the 1st. Every December the 1st is my birthday. <laughs> I just had a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I say that to say I got to come off of Shevin Snow. I've been ordered by my wife, no more shoveling snow. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a little tough out there. Take advantage of this stuff. It's about shoveling your snow. Come on. Let's get with it. Come on, Thank niggas. <laughs> Come on, niggas. Let's go eat All this right, chicken. Stand. Come on, niggas. Massa got some biscuits for us, niggas. Come on, niggas. All right. Uh, next on agenda is fire, Chief McCain. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, trustees, and happy birthday, Trustee Brown. Appreciate you. And, uh, Thank you to the department heads and most importantly the residents of the village of dalton uh total fire responses for the village of dalton year to date fire departments responded to 5162 emergency incidents it's a total of 15 uh calls per day uh, out of those 1753 are fire has made more vehicle accident responses and 3409 emergency medical responses for the total of 5162. Uh, nine safety tips i wanted to go over in regards to um, the holiday season because it's so important that even though it's a festive time of the year we want to make sure our residents are safe and the top nine that we uh that we try to preach to everyone is to make sure that they're aware that half of the home decoration fires in december are started by candles so please be careful with your candles don't leave them unattended more than a third of the home decoration fires are started are started by candles uh, Christmas, Christmas Day itself is the peak day for candle fires. Uh, keep candles at least 12 inches away from anything that burns. Your Christmas tree, if you have a real Christmas tree, please make sure that you uh, top it off with water every day because a, a dry Christmas tree could be dangerous, especially with all the lights on it. Uh, more than one in every five. That's why I say go ahead and let your dog pee on that tree. I'm just playing. <laughs> I have had to battle my dog as well and try to help my dog understand that just because it is a tree <laughs> don't mean that you can pee. <laughs> Christmas tree, tree fires were caused by heat sources that were too close to the, to the tree itself. Uh, read the manufacturer's instructions, recommendations. Make sure you have the proper amount of light strands. You don't want to have 10 light strands uh, plugged into each other. It's going to become a hazard. It can't, uh, can't compete with the amount of electrical load with that. Uh, make sure your tree is at least three feet away from any heat source, like a fireplace, radiator, space heaters, candles, heat vents. Make sure three feet away, 36 inches, and then get rid of your tree after Christmas when it's all dried up. So those are some of the 12 uh, 
uh, safety facts. We want to make sure that the residents in our community are safe from fire, especially during the holiday season. Uh, in regards to the comment that was made earlier, um, the the doors are up to code as far as life safety codes 101. We do have panic hardware for, for egress, so if there was an emergency here, although it's locked from the outside, if there was an emergency inside this building, we do have panic hardware that meet the NFPA code, so in the event of emergency, we're able to get out. Um, and in addition, last but not least, EMT and fire academy classes are starting back up in January. So again, we're currently reaching out to the residents, not only in our community in Dalton, but the surrounding communities to make sure they have an opportunity to take the EMT class and fire academy class. So we're going to be working with Prairie State College, uh, Black Fire Brigade, as well as with the police department and the township to make sure that information gets out. And uh, last but not least, again, I'd like to give a shout out to my guys, Dalton Firefighters, because they do an incredible job. Out of the 20 towns in our Mavis division, we're top five with total run responses and top two with total fire responses. So we're short staffed. They work hard. They train every day. They keep our equipment up to speed. So again, I can't be more proud of those guys because they work very hard for our community and take care of our residents. So thank you, Dalton Firefighters. So thank you. He meant every word of that shit. Did you see his fist? Oh, my God. They got bromances at the fire department. And, uh, Mayor, that will conclude my report. If you got anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, trustee? That'll be recognized, Mayor. Yeah, yes, go ahead. Stan, you still here? <laughs> you want to stop talking again? No. <laughs> you had too much birthday fun. First and foremost, <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to the residents, um, you know, I know you have a nursing knowledge. You've been blessed with five senses. You see, you hear. And I'm quite sure you see and you hear what's being done, being put together. And thank you, Mayor, for the work that you have done out here because, you know, it takes a lot to sit up under this pressure. Yeah. Is you about to cry? Oh, he's feeding for some coke, too. Okay. Is he about to cry? How can you sit here and treat an individual that's only trying to help? Oh, this is an inner cry. He, so I ain't never been about to cry and wanted some candy. <laughs> I am 43 years old. I am an adult. I am a grown ass woman and I ain't never been sitting here almost about to cry and been like, you know what'll make it all right? A peppermint. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? If this isn't some manipulative behavior, oh my God, the performative behavior, behavior. Oh, shit, y'all. <laughs> y'all didn't see that picture I posted in the community tab of my daughter covering herself with a blanket like Lady Gaga and laying on the floor like she was dead because I told her to go in her room for some quiet time. Listen, I'm telling you. <laughs> I walked right past her and went in my room and enjoyed my quiet time. Oh, what in the hell is going on? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What? <laughs> He ain't shit. He trying to squeeze that motherfucker out, honey. Keep on trying, Andrew. You gonna get it out. He is working. Hold on. Andrew Holmes is working, y'all. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it all in one shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Andrew Holmes said, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this performance. We rehearsed this at the mock trial. And I promised Mayor Henry that I would get this right. She demanded that I put these Klingon wrinkles to use. <laughs> and make this shit. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> the fuck is going on here? Oh my God. What is going on here? Oh, shit. And somebody down here, Mason Golden, Elagi, El, I don't know, A-L-I-A-G-A -A -A, said, oh, shit, the mayor's going to reprimand him for admitting the doors were locked. Talking about Pete McCain. Y'all, we got to go. Now, how you flip from that to that? It is amazing to people, to me, how people just surf through emotions. So, <laughs> we got to see this shit. First and foremost, <laughs> I'd like to... Say thank you to the residents. Um, yeah, you know, I know you have a of knowledge. You've been blessed with five senses. You see, you hear. And I'm quite sure you see and you hear what's being done, being put together. And thank you, Mayor, for the work that you have done out here because, you know, it takes a lot to sit up under this pressure. Yeah. Nana. How can you sit here and if y'all see a, an individual if y'all see a tear that's only know. trying to help? You know, but you walk away. You turn your back on who helped you first and foremost. Thank the police department for the work you're doing. You know, I used to think that police get criticism for what they do. But to look at all the police that are in the city of Chicago nah, and the United States are getting polices. criticized, Not getting hits. I've never seen how one person can take those low blows like that and still stand up. She's a narcissist. And get the work done that's being done out here. Thank you, man. Because it takes a lot. She has a mother. She has a daughter. She has a father. First and foremost, the good Lord is healing you and blocking all them blows. What is he talking Cause about? Because as she stated, every time you throw one, two of them come right back at you and you never succeed. What? When you're born into a family, a close-knit family, and you give God all the praises because, you know, you can never, never break through those blessings because see you have been blessed about? to bless this village to bless these people and the village belongs to the people just give the people what they need you know who goes around don't want seniors to have anything that's free mm -hmm. they got their own family members who won't help them and take care of them oh, shit. but thank you for opening up your eyes and helping them Thank you, Dalton Police Department. Same thing, opening up your eyes and seeing what's wrong and try to adjust to what's happening. Last and least, I want the community. If you have those big trucks, those big large trucks that are parked on your block, they shouldn't be parked there. And I'm talking about those big, huge trucks. Wait a minute. Give Dalton Police Department a call because, you know, I get a lot of calls about these big trucks on the blocks overnight, taking up all their space. They cannot park there. They can get ticket. And also, is that toll? Am I correct? Yep. They had a lot of calls the other day. So if you have anything like that, please give the Dalton Police Department a call because we don't sit around like that. They get enforced. And that's on the person who's parking them trucks there. If you have any illegal activity going on, you know, Dalton Police Department to call drugs. It don't make a difference, whatever. We aim to work under this administration to clean house. And soon we will be cleaning house mm -hmm. coming up. But keep God first and stay prayerful. Um, you know, I'm not walking out, um, but I did inform the mayor that I have to run due to another baby that has been shot mm -hmm. so i'm not walking out i love you all stay prayerful most of all stay with us <laughs> thank you thank you mm. 
Y'all, he's on something. We just saw a fucking emotional roller coaster. How do you go from almost crying to the point where you need a peppermint to calm yourself down? To talking about people calling in trucks parked on the street. And he said, we we will clean up house. When? He said, coming up. Well, well, when? He said another baby's been shot. I hate to hear that. But what's his role? What does he do when he goes there? <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda, we have housing. Uh, William Moore. And before you start, Mr. William, just so you guys are aware, they're going to do their reports and then we're going to conclude because they did. Basically, they should have voted for it. That's how, you know, people are um, directing them the wrong way because we will be held accountable for it. Today is the day they should have voted for it. Then they should have walked out. But you never walk out of a meeting. We get elected to do a job, whether we like it or not. Me and the mayor previous went to Seattle. I never walked out of a meeting ever. I sit there and I took whatever blow or hit or whatever someone had to say about me. You got to have tough skin in this game. You can't walk out because you cannot have your way. You just do something about it when election time comes. And I guarantee you, I'm going to do something about it when election time comes. You want to say about your uh, tax levy really quick before you start? You. I, I just want to bring up uh, Attorney Delgado, can I mention item C on the uh, yeah, under new business? Yeah, okay. we just need to put it out the record. So I just want to put on the record uh, item C under new business. Uh, is a motion to accept and approve the preliminary estimate of the 2023 property tax levy collected in 2024 in accordance with the truth and taxation law of Illinois. Um, we expect a levy. Uh, we expect the levy to be passed on the December 26 tax uh, December 26 meeting, and we intend to levy the amount of fifteen million nine hundred two thousand seventy nine dollars. Thank you. All right. Damn, they so just we had raised to put that into record, dollars. so we won't be behind on deadlines. They raised that revy like by four million dollars, and if you remember correctly, um, it didn't pass. They had to go ahead and put it in at eleven million, I think. Um, next we have Mr. William, and then we will conclude. Mr. Moore, right. you're welcome. And y'all, it is not by accident that Janice Johnson always looks tired. I believe she's an addict too. She she given she given uh, Felicia vibes. And to our board and to our um, hardworking um, directors and managers and to our residents, I want to say happy holidays. Mayor, if I can say this, I'll, I'll just piggyback on what Trustee um, Holmes was saying. I believe there's more for you than there are against you. Yeah. And I believe these leaders here, we stand with you. Thank you. I know, we know how hard you work mm -hmm. and tirelessly that you work. Mm -hmm. And we're in the meetings when you're paying when the things are not being done for the citizens. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. We love you. We're going to stand with you. And I encourage every person that's not here, that's watching this, send this young lady, send our mayor some words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Send her some things. That she, that if you know that she's worked for you, send her some encouragement. Don't stand in the shadows. we got more people coming out saying what they don't like. But I promise you, I'm here at 7, 7.30 in the morning. From mm -hmm. 7.30 to when I leave, People are calling and saying how well you're doing. Encourage her. Why don't you come and tell her? I tell her every time I see her. Encourage her. She has a family. She has a family. And this is the season of joy. So don't be dismayed by what you see. God is for you and he is for you. He's more than the whole world against you. Okay, so I, I thank you for the honor to serve with you. And we're going to get through this, God willing. Yep. Amen. Amen. So I'll go ahead and give my report. No, you won't. I'm cutting in. Um, I'm not going to read him down like I have before about his misuse of scripture and his spiritual abuse. Y'all already know what's tea on that. Um, he said, we're in the meetings where you pay when things are not being done. What did he mean by that? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I'll just give it at high level for um, housing. Uh, we had a grand total of 55000 $367.97 of fees that we collected. And for our permits uh, for the month of uh, November, we had a grand total of $46,981.24, bringing us to a grand total of $102,349.21. Mayor, that concludes my report. 
and we'll be back here in the morning working to serve our residents. Thank you for the honor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so that concludes much. my report. All right. Um, if any By William Moore saying it's an honor to work for her, he's saying he doesn't deserve to have his job. He's not competent. He doesn't, he, he didn't earn his place. That's what he's saying. If anybody would like to address um, this body, uh, anybody from administration um, about an issue or something that we need to address, please um, let us know your issue or your concern. Um, lastly, stay safe. Love on each other. I say this all the time. Call your neighbor. Call your loved one. If it's something going on in your life and you're a two or a family member, call. Make it right. They don't have to reach out. You reach out. Let's just flip it this time. Because at the end of the day, today not promise, tomorrow not promise. I've seen so many people um, at my doorstep, so many people in my office crying about they should have, could have, would have. And what I mean by that is they didn't have the opportunity to make it right. So all I can do is just try to educate you guys and give you the knowledge and uh, uplift you to maybe make that first stance uh, from the little dog that keep boo-booing in your yard. Say, neighbor, I, I forgive you. We're going to do better next time. I just want you to know that I'm here if you need me. Y'all got to do things about? like that. And for some, that's been working. Um, they call me back and say that they made um, amends with a loved one or their neighbor. Um, you guys, I've had so Wait, many different... she said the people were sad because the people died. Now she's saying they made amends with them. And they neighbor they, whose dog was shitting in their yards. I cannot with this dumb shit. Well, at least we got a whole month knocked out tonight. Issues along this year. It's been an awesome year, but it's been an uphill battle as it relates to life, love, uh, just in your kids. Because your kids are your future. I say that because I get a lot of people that won't take care of their kids. I got a lot of people that's actually doing better due to the fact that we put all these activities and festivities in our town, which bring community together. I love the fact that parents went at the club when we had an event one night um, it was out on the rink skating with their kids instead of going out and the baby said my mom normally go to the club tonight mayor but she's out here with me i love you i said i love you too so them the stories and moments that, that warm my heart that make me keep pushing through all the controversy i mean your mama deserves to go to the motherfucking club i mean y'all get on your mama's nerves sometimes she can't go out god damn it she i hope she went out after they went to the uh skating rink that, the number of moments that we don't get on tape, but none of the moments I can share with you because that's what make me keep going and not giving up. As my baby just to say, never, never, ever give up. And you have to tell your kids and your family members the same exact thing because at the end of the day, it is light at the end of the tunnel. Just because you're going through that season right now don't mean you're not going to make it. Sometimes that is your test. Because it's not a testimony without a test. So you got to remember that. But you got to make sure. You she said her child said never, ever, ever give up. Like that was some genius, uh, poignant, thought provoking. Yeah, thought provoking is that podcast. Understand that this too will shall pass. But you got to be strong enough to stand in it and see that you, it's like. Because remember, whether you're going to go through it, but you got to grow through it too. And as we go through it, the growth is what matters. Those are the lessons of life. I tell everybody, it don't matter what you do or how you do it. What matters is how... There's a comment down below from Choose Compassion. Let me see if I can bring it up by fast forwarding through some of what she said. It's going to be right in the middle of the comment section down below from Choose Compassion um, with a brownish colored avatar it says right under the red avatar it says a kid has been shot in her town right now and she's still sitting there talking and that reminds me of the night justin carr was shot justin carr was shot and then preachers set up in that church and kept meeting about the problems black people was having in charlotte north carolina and they knew <clears throat> because this dude named demario Mario went back to the church, ran back to the church and told the pe the preachers a boy had been shot and they kept meeting. That's the night that the lights were now in Georgia. A part I wanted him. Uh, it was really awesome. He talked about how people was against him. He talked about how his family, loved ones, friends, people that didn't think he was going to make it. And he made his play. And he wasn't doing great numbers. He put all his money up behind himself. That's why I tell you, you got to invest in yourself first before you go begging other people to invest their money in you. So he did that, and the play was a flop. 
He came back, did it again. It was another flop. That's actually not good advice. You do want to get investors and spend other people's money first. Anybody who's who's run a business will tell you that. Came back again and did it. And guess what? He put on a dress. When he put on that dress, Medina, Medea became a star. And no one ever saw that coming because they went a different angle. But sometimes you have to readjust your fight or your message because sometimes people didn't get it this way but they got it when he put on that dress so all i'm telling you is what does tyler perry dressing up as a woman have to do with politics and building growing and moving a city forward where does she get i mean she says she's got a bachelor's degree but she be quoting pop culture. Readjust. Remember, we put. You don't ever hear her talk about her own professional experience, do you? Because she don't have none. And chess, not checkers. Amen. All right. I have a conclude with that. Uh, I love y'all. Nothing y'all can do about it. But go check that out because it's really, really inspiring. And now he's the number one person in the um, industry. So all I'm telling you is remember, it don't matter. People see your... Now he's the number one person in the industry. Can you quantify that? That's like Umar Johnson said he saved hundreds of lives. <laughs> Glory, but they don't know your story. Oh, and God. he's telling his story of how he came from and how he's on top right now. He had big time producers, directors, people that didn't think he was going to make it. And he made it. He had all that up against him, like y'all see y'all mirror. All this up against me. But I'm always stating the facts. I'm always staying um, prayed up. I'm always stating what is going on in our village. And I'm going to work on it next year. I promise you this. I'll work on coming in here and just actually ask them how they go vote. And keep it moving. Because at the end of the day, work on my work in, speaks for us. Work on coming and starting a meeting on time. Work on that. Work on. You're right. You should work on it. You should be getting some counseling and some therapy. You need to book at least an hour a week. You have access to it. I heard you guys pay $12,000 for employee benefits. Part of those benefits include counseling sessions. I think you get three a year. As part of your employee business, your employee resource, honey, go sit down with somebody. Take that work stress, that relationship stress, that parenting stress, and go sit down with somebody. There's not a mayor in town who doesn't have a therapist. Well, maybe not in the Midwest. You said you started getting massages. Maybe you should start working on Reiki. But I really do think you need to go work with a therapist on narcissism. Maybe borderline personality disorder, according to one of my good girlfriends. Quite possibly bipolar, but I wouldn't say so much based on my limited understanding of bipolar disorder. I would definitely say closer to borderline personality disorder with a church of narcissism. Maybe even some PTSD, because it ain't no telling. If you act like that, I can only imagine what you were raised around. Yeah. That's all that matters. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. All right, good night. Enjoy. Whew. Well, there's that. We knocked a whole month out in one meeting. I really appreciate them for uh, adjourning that meeting so that we could. And I think she, she talked for a good, what, 45 minutes to them people? That's crazy. But anyway, that's all I got. You want me to say it again? Okay. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. Thank you, girl. <laughs> I holler. <laughs>